Afterward, Jesus found him where? Where? In the temple. In the temple, he's carrying his bed. In the temple, he's walking too much. In the temple, Jesus found him. And in fact, the word found is a Greek word, heurisko. This is also very important because it gives us insight into Jesus. The word heurisko is the same Greek word for a scientific investigation, a decision that I'm going to search and search and search until I find what I'm looking for. Jesus was determined. He was not going to leave until he found this man and followed up with this man that had been healed. There is no one better at follow-up than Jesus. He doesn't just save you and leave you, baptize you in the Spirit, leave you, heal you, leave you. Jesus follows up. And here we find Jesus, the Greek word eurisco, which literally means like an investigator. Jesus is working through the crowd saying, find me that man. Where is that man that walked in the pool of Bethesda? Where did he go? Somebody find me that man. Jesus, like an investigator, scientifically searching and searching and searching the Greek word eurisco until finally he found him. By the way, this word found, the Greek word eurisco, is also where we get the word eureka. It was a eureka moment. Jesus was elated when he finally found the man. Afterward, Jesus found him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. <laughs> that word behold is a Greek word, ido, almost impossible to translate in the English language, and that's why every time it's used in the King James Version, they always translate it as behold, every time. But the word really means, wow. That's a better translation. And wow, you are made whole. It's the very same word that Jesus used. When he said to the disciples, tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high, behold, I'm going to send the promise of my Father upon you. That word behold means, wow, am I ever going to send something amazing from my Father upon you? When Jesus said to the disciples, behold, I give you authority over serpents and scorpions and over all the work of the enemy, it's the same Greek word. Jesus was so excited and impressed with what he was about to say that Jesus himself said, wow, it is amazing what I'm about to give you. Behold, wow, do I ever give you power and authority. It always carries the sense of amazement. And now when Jesus sees this man whose life has been restored to him, how does Jesus respond? Jesus, the miracle worker, looks at him, and the Greek literally means Jesus said, wow, wow. How many of you want Jesus to look at you and say, wow, that's amazing? Even Jesus was impressed. Wow, thou art made whole. Your life has been given back to you. And then Jesus makes the statement. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. It's very important. Because it tells us that something in his life may have initially opened the door for this affliction. There are door openers. Your faith can open the door to the power of God or a wrong action, as I taught in last night's service, can create an access point that the enemy enters into your life. Jesus said the same thing to the man who he delivered from 6,000 demons in the country of Gadara. He said to the same man, go away, sin no more, lest something worse come to you. Something had originally opened a door for the sickness to come. And now Jesus literally said to the man, hey, your life has been given back to you again. Don't go back and did what you did at the beginning that started this whole thing. Close every door, seal every crack. Make sure you don't go back to repeat what you did in the beginning because if you do it again, the door will be opened again. This happens many times in people's lives. God touches people. God is so amazing. You know, the church is Bethesda. We are a house of mercy. God's grace is poured out here. His favor is poured out here. The miraculous is poured out here. God's grace is just poured out, poured out, poured out. God miraculously touches people. He does his part. And they go home and make no changes in their life. And the sickness comes back, and they say, well, I lost my healing. No, you opened the door for the same thing to happen again. You've got to do more than just receive a miraculous touch. I really love what we read about Jesus healing the daughter of Jairus. Over in Mark chapter 5, he raised her from the dead. He raised her from the dead and then commanded them that something should be given to her to eat. There's a supernatural side and there is a natural side. God will do the supernatural work, but you've got to follow it up and do the right stuff naturally if you're going to keep what he has done in your life. And so many people have received a miraculous touch, but they didn't follow up and do the stuff to keep it. And Jesus said, behold, wow, this is amazing. What a shining example of mercy and grace. You are made whole. Your life has been restored to you. Now sin no more. The word sin in this case means stop making the mistakes you made previously. 
lest a worse thing come unto you. And the man departed and told the Jews it was Jesus that made him whole. The Greek says it was Jesus who gave my life back to me. And that's what Jesus wants to do for everybody. He wants to give their life back to them. If you've been destroyed emotionally, he wants to give his life back, your life back to you. If you've been destroyed physically, he wants to give your life back to you. If your relationships have been shattered, he wants to give your life back to you. Jesus is in the business of giving life back to us. The truth is, most of us lying on our side, say, oh, Jesus, I want to change. Oh, God, I want to change. And Jesus asked the same question that he's been asking for 2,000 years. Are you really sure you want to change? Do you understand what change means? Are you sure you want to get up and walk out of this place? Do you realize the sweeping changes it's going to bring into your life if I really do what you're asking me to do? But here's what I love, and this is where I'm going to close. The man gave Jesus a very confused answer. But Jesus could see the man's heart. Have you ever prayed nonsense and hoped that God could see your heart? God sees your heart even when you're rambling and saying a bunch of nonsense. And if your heart has a desire to change, Kurie, the Lord, he is willing and ready to tell you right now in this very moment, your day has come. Pick up that bed, get moving. Your day of deliverance has come. And that was my message for you this morning. This is the word of the Lord to you.